All right, so one place where languages vary um, quite a bit, which is a pretty interesting and easy thing to look at in terms of their phonetics and phonology, um, is in this variable called voice onset time. Now this has to do with plosives, so um, things like T, D, um, G, K, um, P, B. Um, and it has to do with how far after the point where you release the plosive, where you release the closure in the plosive, um, does your voice start making the vowel sound? Um, so if you have the syllable ta, um, how long do you have between when you let go of the, the T closure, where you have your, your tongue touched to your alveolar ridge, and when you start pronouncing that vowel? Um, you have at one end of the spectrum something that's clearly aspirated. This has a long voice onset time, um, a long positive voice onset time. This is called a positive voice onset time. Just because of how we measure it, this is called a positive voice onset time. Um, and at the other end, you have things that are called pre-voiced, um, and these have a negative voice onset time. Now, in an aspirated stop, the, voice, the voicing starts way after the stop is released, and in a, in, in a pre-voice stop, it starts even before you, you release the stop. So um, when you make a T sound, um, uh, the result is that you get silence, right? So if you've closed, closed off everything and are not voicing anything, you have silence for a second, right? So if, if you're thinking of this as the acoustic signal, you have this period of silence. So this is the closure. This is while you have no sound, no airs flowing through. Um, and then you get this point, which is called the release. And that's where you start to get that t, t, t hissy sound, right? Is at that point of release. Um, and then eventually you get to a place where you have the vowel sound, right? The vowel sound is starting up, right? This period in here is your VOT, your voice onset time. Um, in, in a pre-voiced sound, you have the closure, but the closure is here. And you can see it's not silent during the closure. And usually when you look at acoustic signals, you get this weird like single line, very wiggly single line. That's what it looks like on a, on a, on a um, if you're looking at the acoustic signature. Um, uh, and then you get the release, and right, you know, right after that, there's no hissiness like we saw up here, right? So there's this weird sort of low-level hissiness, and here it goes straight into vowel sound, this louder sound that signals that it's a vowel, right? So this is your voice onset time here. Right, so see how here it's on the right side of the release and here it's on the left side of the release. Um, that's why this one's a positive and this one is a negative voice onset time. Um, now we have this area in between something that is clearly aspirated and something that is clearly pre-voiced and these are what we call like regular T's and D's. Um, and language to language, what we call a T that's in somewhere in between here and here usually and what we call a D is somewhere in between here and here, right? It's usually somewhere around here. Um, uh, this is a zero voice onset time, right? So you can see here's the closure, but we've got none of the hissy stuff, right? So, so our closure and our release, or, or and, the on, and the voice onset are both together right there, and so it's a zero VOT. Um, and a zero VOT is sort of, is usually a D, but it can be a T depending on the language and how that language is treating it. So one interesting thing to look at um, cross-linguistically is where is the voice onset time. Now one thing that you guys may all be familiar with is that um, part of having a Spanish accent, you know, an accent of somebody who's a native Spanish speaker, is, is you have this, the, the T's sound weird. And the reason for that is that when you're growing up a Spanish speaker, your voice onset time for a T is closer to this one, is closer to a, a zero VOT than it is to this, whereas a native English speaker has an, a voice onset time closer to this. 
And it's very hard to relearn that. And so that's why you have those differences. Um, so this is an interesting thing to measure if you're trying to compare different languages.